Today, nearly half a century after Roe v. Wade ruled that a woman had the right to an abortion, 21 states ban or restrict the procedure earlier than the standards set by this groundbreaking legal case of 1973. Reproductive health rights are fundamental to women and have a tremendous history in the United States. For Faye Waddleton, advocating for these rights would become a lifelong journey. I first learned of Faye in 2014 while doing independent research on the history of Planned Parenthood, and I have been amazed by her strength and poise ever since. From nurse to advocate, Faye would spearhead the pro-choice movement of the 1980s and come to be called the Princess of Death by extremists. Born Alice Faye Waddleton in St. Louis, 1943, Faye was an only child to Southern immigrant parents. Her mother was a fundamentalist Protestant minister, proud and strong in her beliefs. While her parents traveled to preach about things controversial at the time, a six-year-old Faye went to live with family for the next eight years. She grew up under staunch fundamentalism, where even dancing and movies were prohibited. Instead, they would attend church five nights a week in a congregation that believed those outside their denomination would go to hell. Faye has referred to this as the cocoon of her raising. But at age 15, Faye graduated high school, and at 16, she enrolled in college at Ohio State University to pursue a degree in nursing, a dream she had had since she was a child when young girls had very few career options. Her mother had wanted her to become a missionary, and in a way, she did, just not as her mother intended. While in nursing school, she worked at a children's hospital where she cared for neglected, abused, and unwanted children. She saw evidence of women who didn't want to be pregnant, didn't know how to prevent pregnancies, or had major complications. Nursing opened Faye's eyes to a world outside of her cocoon, exposing her to the raw circumstances of women's lives during a time when women were injured or killed in an attempt to control fertility. After Faye earned her bachelor's degree in 1964, she taught at a nursing school for two years before returning for her master's degree. She chose a program with a midwifery element as this was the future of women's reproductive health. Faye attended Columbia University in New York, interning at, interning at a hospital in Harlem treating females with life-threatening side effects from unsafe abortions and witnessing various aspects of unwanted pregnancies. She says Harlem truly changed her by taking her out of her element in a very profound way. And in 1967, Faye was awarded a Master of Science degree in maternal and infant care. Since, she has received 15 honorary doctoral degrees. Accordingly, her nursing career was built on the foundation that she could not make judgments about others' lives, believing these women needed understanding and compassion. Based on her experiences, she concluded that had she chosen another profession, she'd have adopted the fundamentalistic point of view of her formative years. Upon graduating from Columbia, she returned to Ohio, where she became the president of the Visiting Nurses Association and an advocate for women's reproductive health. A year later, she would be asked to join the board of the Dayton Planned Parenthood, and shortly after, she was asked to step up as the director of the chapter. Subsequently, in 1978, at 33 years old, Faye Waddleton was elected the national president of the Planned Parenthood Federation of America, an institution traditionally run by white men. This made her the youngest and first person of color to be named president of the nation's oldest and largest voluntary reproductive health organization. With the reproductive rights movement in full swing, her leadership was molded by her personal encounters with the societal consequences pregnancy had on young women. Under her leadership, the PPFA provided medical and educational services to 4 million Americans expanded its range of healthcare services, and became more politically engaged with two main goals, improve women's reproductive health and promote gender equality. 
Faye never intended to become a publicly visible leader, but when the focus of Planned Parenthood shifted to emphasize abortion rights, she became known as the Princess of Death. Later in a 2018 interview at a Columbia University, Faye stated, when people's views become extreme, they become very dangerous. Planned Parenthood had been faced with opposition as extremist, extremists trained in terrorist techniques. Clinics experienced shootings, bombings, and fires with employees being killed or injured. A Time Magazine article from 1989 expressed that Faye also received death threats from anti-abortionists and had to be accompanied by a bodyguard. In the meantime, Faye became the longest tenured professional to hold the position of president and CEO of the Planned Parenthood Federation of America, leaving in 1992. By the time she left, Planned Parenthood had more than 170 affiliates in 49 states and Washington, D.C., operating more than 800 health centers. She went on to host a talk show about women's rights and gave lectures throughout the country before forming the Center for the Advancement of Women in 2002. This was a nonprofit think tank conducting research for public education and advocacy for women with the purpose of starting a national conversation about the aspects of women's lives. As a result of her activism, Faye has numerous achievements under her belt. She was named Humanist of the Year in 1986 and was the 1993 inductee into the National Woman's Hall of Fame. Her autobiography, titled Life on the Line, was published in 1996 and showcased why she chose advocacy for women's reproductive health. The same year, she received the Margaret Sanger Women of Valor Award. A celebrated lecturer, Faye was named one of the best female speakers in America by New Woman Magazine and one of the 25 most influential people by Esquire. Lastly, in an article she wrote for Prevention Magazine in 2021, Faye reminds readers to maintain perspective about how long the reproductive area of a woman's life has been under scrutiny. Having played a profound part in establishing the national debate over health and reproductive rights for women, Faye's history of leadership has spanned five decades as she continues to advocate for women at 80 years old. Faye Waddleton has demonstrated that advocacy for women is a lifelong journey, one we cannot give up on. Thank you for listening.